new president takes office this week, and there's great interest in how Donald Trump will handle a job, especially in terms of foreign relations and diplomacy. I asked Vincent Ferraro, Professor Emeritus of International Politics at Mount Holyoke College, to share with us his thoughts about the incoming president and world affairs. Reading the foreign newspapers, one cannot help but understand that the rest of the world is holding its breath, wondering what is going on, and not knowing what to expect. Uh, it's very clear that uh, Mr. Trump doesn't have a long track record in diplomacy. Uh, he hasn't really had public office, uh, and the rest of the world is wondering what's going to happen. It may seem silly, I guess, to to the average person, and maybe you can put it in perspective for us, but I gather there are very real protocols and norms when nations deal with other nations. And I know much was made of the fact that Mr. Trump, after the election, didn't follow the usual list of, of our oldest and closest allies to be called, the Prime Minister of Britain, the President Hollande of France, that I, I think he called Ireland and took calls from Argentina and spoke to President Argentina before that. And Apparently, that does matter. It matters big time. Uh, when you're dealing with a whole bunch of independent sovereign states, protocol is the way they essentially size up each other. Uh, and if you break the protocol, then people wonder what the hierarchy is, and they wonder exactly what the commitment is. And did the break in hierarchy or in protocol indicate a lessening of a commitment or a deepening of a commitment to someone else? Um, the protocol is just a way to send messages, signals, and they're very important. Um, you know, when you observe them, um, it doesn't seem like very much, but when you break them, it means a great deal. So a nation like France that we always call our first or our oldest ally, a nation like Britain, you almost always hear a president say our closest ally, if, if they don't feel that, it matters. It matters a great deal. I mean, it, the one most notorious case was getting the call from the okay. president of Taiwan um, because that broke uh, uh, an established protocol that was uh, established by President Carter in 1979. And the Chinese uh, were very diplomatic at the beginning, uh, understanding that this was a slap in their face, but they attributed it to um, the fact that Mr. Trump was a relative newcomer to diplomacy. But then his repeated tweets um, really got their anger up. And finally, in the most recent editorial in the China Times, uh, they said that he has the understanding of an ignorant child in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And that is really strong language. And, and certainly a nation like China, People's Republic of China, I'm talking now, right. watches very carefully what we do. There has been reporting that this was not by chance, that some of Mr. Trump's advisors, John Bolton in particular, very, very radically conservative anti-China guy, had said, Let, let's, let's tweak the Chinese a little bit. Let's, let's tick them off and let them know where we're coming from. H how does that play into the whole world picture when that happens, something like that? Well, it's interesting how people have defended that act because they said he's trying to inject a degree of unpredictability uh, into the relationship with China. And under certain circumstances, unpredictability can be a good tactic, but it's not a strategy. You have to ask yourself the question, okay, we've had this established relationship with China, one of the emerging powers in the world. It's becoming very prominent uh, militarily. It's, it's unquestionably prominent economically. And you say, okay, we want to open up this, uh, this little wedge between us uh, on the issue of Taiwan. What are we going to gain? I mean, what's the leverage you're looking for? What's the concession you're looking for from China? I mean, I don't see exactly what the purpose was, except to tweak China. And you know, making people angry is usually not a good strategy for good relations. What's your read on the naming of the CEO of ExxonMobil, Rex Tillerson, to be the Secretary of State. Uh, again, people say, well, he's got tremendous international experience negotiating oil and gas exploration deals and drilling and importing and exporting. And, but what about not having diplomatic? And what about a very close relationship, apparently a pretty friendly personal relationship with the President of Russia? What do you, what do you make of all that? It's incredibly dangerous. I, I don't 
exactly know exactly what the relationship of Mr. Trump to Russia is. I mean, we know very little about uh, his economic interests. Uh, we know that they span uh, a number of countries. Uh, we know that his son-in-law said that Russian assets uh, form a disproportionate share of Trump uh, Incorporated. Um, but there is a real danger of conflating personal private interest with the public interest of the, the country. Uh, and in the case of Tillerson, you know, he's got arrangements with Russia uh, that were suspended in 2014 because of the sanctions mm -hmm. uh, that roughly equate to about $500 billion. Um, and Mr. Tillerson is going to be compensated on the basis of his stock holdings in ExxonMobil. Uh, and if these sanctions are lifted and the, the plans go through, Mr. Tillerson's going to make billions and billions of dollars. We have an ambassador named who has a long history of strong support for Israel, talks about moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Again, the kind of thing that the average person looks and says, well, what's the big deal? But Israel, it's a big deal. They desperately want that. They seem very happy with this ambassador designate. But what about the other people in that part of the world, the Arab world? What, what message do they get, do you think? Well, if we move the embassy to Jerusalem, um, I think that the, the Middle East will explode. I mean, I think that the Palestinians have made this claim for an extended period of time. And no one in the world has recognized uh, Israeli sovereignty over the West Bank or the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, and this would be a unilateral move uh, that would essentially foreclose any peace negotiations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. If you say there's no purpose any longer in talking, then where do you go? It sounds to me, though, like you are, oh, you've made very clear, you are very concerned, you feel the world is very concerned right now about where the United States is and who we are and what we do. No question. Uh, you look at all the indices, uh, of, you look at elections, the movement to the far right, uh, to far right parties in Europe, you look at the rise of strong leaders like Erdogan in Turkey, Duterte in the Philippines, the way President Xi in China has consolidated his power, Putin's power, Maduro in Venezuela. We're looking at the rise of authoritarian rule. Um, and the parallels to the 1930s are really striking and uh, terrifying. Professor Vincent Ferraro, thank you so much for your perspective, sir. We appreciate having you. Thank you.